I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So is it cool if I open by just reading your te- last text to me? Yes, yes. Okay. Please read my last text. Yes. It's very important. It says, uh, I'll be on in a sec, hopping in the shower and reeling from the insanity that is Spice World. And yes, by Spice World, you mean the 1997 theatrical release of the Spice Girls film Spice World. Yes, I am specifically referring to the movie Spice World. So, OK. Uh, Why were you watching a 1997 movie about the Spice Girls? I wasn't. I wasn't. OK. What happened was Christina made a joke about Spice Girls. OK. Like a zig a zig. Ah, we were like joking about what the fuck that means. Yeah. And what does that mean? What ended up, it, we arrived at Come Come. I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want, I want, I really, really want a Come Come Ah. So uh. that was what we arrived at. Um, so the we we're gonna earn the explicit tag already. <laughs> um, but so I was like, wait a second. There was a Spice Girl movie. And Christine was like, yeah, Spice World. And I'm like, that movie was fucking weird, wasn't it? There was like a scene with aliens in it. There's. Did you actually see this movie? I've seen parts of it. Wow. But like years ago, like back in the, like this is from my memory of like my sister was watching it in her bedroom and I yeah. caught little glimpses of stuff. Right? Yeah. Because my sister was into was into Spice Girls. I was not. Um, I had forgotten the fact that Spice Up Your Life is even a song, um, which I'm going to get to in a second. Don't worry. That's a part of this. Um, So I was looking through it, and I read the synopsis on Wikipedia for Spice World, right? Yeah. Because, like, the basic idea is Spice Girls are, you know dealing with the fact that they're so famous and blah, 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 blah. And then they have people who are pitching film ideas for them because, of course, a movie about the Spice Girls is going to be talking about how the Spice Girls should be making a movie because they're so popular oh, and blah, 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 right? Um, they found out that they're going to be going to, like, a Albert Hall to, like, perform, and it's, like, the biggest... Yeah performance of their career or whatever the fuck right and then they have like paparazzis following them yada 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 right and then uh they have a friend who's uh having a baby and they they go to the hospital they the baby gets delivered they make a joke about how ginger should take her top off to wake up the boy who's in a coma and then, then she's like, <laughs> she's like, well, it wouldn't do much good because he can't see anyways. And then his eyes open because, you know, it was a child. Be- because. Um, <laughs> and so, then if the movie ends with Ginger getting put on the on a list. <laughs> kind of. Um, so so and then they like they have that really like large double decker bus that's way too big. Yeah. Right. And then like um, they. They're, like, driving to, like, the place that they need to get to, and uh-huh. they find a bomb in the trap door of the bus for some reason, and of then course. they don't deal with it. They don't deal with it for the rest of the movie, um, and they jump the, the uh, what is it, Tower Bridge, yeah. right, as it's, like, raising, and the scene where they jump it, it switches from real live action to a toy bus jumping over a model of Tower Bridge <laughs> over a tiny yeah. little, like, sailboat that is very clearly a t- fake. Like, not even trying. And the water is, like, blue uh, blue construction paper. Was it... So... Wh- which kind of bad was it? Was it, like, a like, very intentional, like, um, 
like 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 if Matt Parker and Trey Stone made a movie with a car chase and then it cut to like toy cars, was it like that style or was it like, oh, they just they just fucked up? No, it was it was that style. Okay, but, but like so it, it was on prob- purpose bad. It was on purpose bad, but like it missed the mark. Like, okay, I'm sending you a picture of it right now. So like. I I have been one to do dumb shit, right? Like yeah. I kind of I kind of have a my aesthetic is stupid as shit, right? <laughs> like Yeah. Like that's my aesthetic, doing some dumb stuff. That like and like doing stuff on purpose bad. Mm-hmm. Right? I do that. That's a thing that I do. But, like, even for me, this is, like, a big... This is a movie at the height of the Spice Girls' popularity. Oh. And, like... Oh, it's it's that kind of bad. Yeah. Like, it's not like they could... I, I don't think it was a thing that they couldn't have afforded it. It wasn't a... See, if... Like... It wasn't high effort. It wasn't... Because, like, making something out of, like... Like that toy, that jump would have been great if it was high effort bad, but it was low effort. I sent you the wrong link. Bad. Yeah, like there, that's there's, the like worst. Like if it was high effort, like if they did like a lot, of, like a highly detailed tiny city with like rivers and shit, with that little bus jump, I'd be like, oh shit, like that's awesome, like Team America World Police style. That's just, I mean, like you okay, can, so well on a high school like project. Yeah. Well, like, they could have... So, to do that kind of surrealism right, you pretty much have to make everything look... Like, you have to have a bunch of stuff look good, and then there's one shitty piece, and that's the focal point. Yeah. Right? Like, that's the point. This whole thing is shitty. Yes, it's all bad. It's all bad. And, like, the problem is, to make something properly funny by making it bad, is you have to put, like, serious effort into making it look good... A and then deliberately choose one thing to make shitty. Yeah. That's, that's like the joke. half the point. That's they, the joke. They completely missed the joke on this one. They missed the point of this joke entirely, right? Because, like, the movie itself is already terrible, right? Yeah. So you can't, you can't do an intentionally bad scene in a bad movie, right? Yeah. Like, it's, mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hit. Because the rest of the movie is genuine, yeah. but it's bad. And then you have a scene where it's bad intentionally. And it's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What are you smoking? Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that all non-music video media put out by all bands, with the exception of two, is always bad 100% of the time. The only two exceptions are the... Uh, 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 Tenacious D and the Aquabats. Anyone that's not Tenacious D or the Aquabats, all of your media sucks and it's terrible and bad. Weird Al. Weird Al was. Would you I love UHF. Like Jeff? Uh, does that count? He made as the like Weird a Al show too. He made the Weird Al show yeah, as well. Right, we'll, so. we'll, we'll, we'll group Weird Al in there too. But like, and he's making a movie right now. Like that's fantastic. There is a movie that's coming out. And yeah. apparently he gave Daniel Radcliffe a accordion, and I'm super jealous of him. That's so Daniel Radcliffe, very good in Miracle Workers on HBO. It's um, so but, good. So put a pin in that, yeah. because I'm still not done talking about the movie. Oh, God. Because, <laughs> Brandon, the reason I looked it up was because oh. I remember a scene from the movie Spice World. Now... I don't think you've ever seen Spice World, right? I have not. I can say that with okay. confidence and know I'm a better human for it. You definitely are. Like, the fact that I've seen even a part of Spice World has tainted my soul forever. Um, If there is an afterlife, I am not fit to enter it because of the existence it of It has Spice a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. It sure does, Brandon. It sure does. So, there's a scene in the movie, and, oh, by the way, Meatloaf is their tour bus driver. Oh, uh. And they make a joke. (laughs) 
they make yeah. a joke. So the, the toilet is fucked up, right? And the girls ask Meatloaf to fix it. And he says, I would do anything for you girls, but I won't do that. Oh, God. So there's a scene. Is at this a, a UFO? The movie. There's a scene in which aliens show up in the Spice World movie. Why are there aliens? Because the, because the toilet is fucked up, so they they go out into the woods to take a shit, basically. Yeah. Right? And aliens come down, third encounters, like uh, close encounters of the third kind style. Is it third kind? Low effort aliens. They, they're like, it's like yeah. high, uh, high budget, low effort is pretty much this whole and movie. That, that's the entire definition of the movie. It, so, I think it had a budget of $20 million, which is a lot in the 90s. Here's a meatloaf um, fact for you. My architecture professor um, worked with a guy who was doing the floor plans for a remodel of one of Meatloaf's houses. Mm-hmm. And he wanted, a, I forget if it was the second or third floor, but he wanted like a, a second floor, like big hot tub. And in order to do that, he had to put a support pillar on under it on the floor below and he just kept refusing and he stopped the contractor from putting in that support pillar and it fucked up his house it was fantastic good Good. um so anywho this scene comes out of nowhere in the movie and these aliens come out of this spaceship and apparently they're like they fucking love the spice girls right because of course they do but here's a few there's a few key takeaways from this they ask for autographs but in an alien language that somehow the spice girls can understand and like they even make a joke about what are the names being like is that four k's because like the name had a bunch of k's in it and you can read it on the subtitles so for some reason the spice girls can understand what they're saying right but they're speaking in an alien language just welsh it's just welsh (laughs) i wish (laughs) um but so one of the aliens comes up to scary spice and grabs her boob. Okay. <laughs> That's That just happens. That just happens. Huh. That just happens. And then uh Scary's like, oi, hands off, because she's like got that cockney whatever. Yeah. Um and then they're like, okay, can we get autographs instead? Because like there's no tickets left, so like let's get autographs, blah 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 blah. And then one of the aliens is like, hey, ginger one, give me a kiss. Why? <laughs> and what? she gives him a kiss. Wow. Okay. I I don't know. I the, the worst part is then it's gone from the movie. They move on from it. And then they make an appearance in the dance number at the end. Like as like on a like the moon or some shit. But Brandon. Yes. But Brandon. That's not the core. Like that's a f- weird thing, and that would that was something that I was looking into, anyways, because mm-hmm. I didn't like I wasn't gonna bring it up on the podcast because it was, it was it was weird, but like whatever. The thing that I have to talk about, uh huh, is in the ending scene they show up. The aliens. And the aliens. Is this an after the credit song- or before credit scene? Before credits. Okay. Because during the credits, they break the fourth wall, and then, like, talk Uh, about people kissing, snogging in the back, and they comment on someone's dress. So, um... That's what got Bill Clinton in trouble. The song they sing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Bill Bill Clinton's a terrible person. Um, (laughs) and I'll stand by that. I I don't believe that we've had a good person as president in... (laughs) Basically ever. 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 It's, it's an ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the song that they sing, Brandon, is Spice uh-huh. Up Your Life. Now, I don't remember. I don't know if you remember the song Spice Up Your Life. I don't. But it's like a popular one, right? Uh-huh. And like the chorus of it is colors of the world, spice up your life. Every boy okay. and every girl, spice up your life. People of the world... Spice up your life. Ah, ah. And then it follows up with, slam it to the left if you're having a good time. Shake it to the right if you know that you feel fine. Cheek is to the front. Ha, ha, 
uh, 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 go round. <laughs> and there's a, there's a section in this. So, like, it sounds yeah. like it's like, oh, everyone, have fun. Like, all yeah. the colors of the world, la, 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 la. Yeah. Is there a board there, like, except everyone named Kathy? <laughs> the first line of a phrase in this song? Uh-huh. Yellow man in Timbuktu. Oh, oh, oh. oh wow. Okay. I'm sh- that. I sure. <laughs> Color for sure. both me and you. Kung Fu fighting. Dancing queen. Tribal spaceman. And all that's in between. What? Brandon, I was listening. I was like trying to find the thing and I heard that and I'm like. What? This came out in 97 and nobody thought to think like, hey, guys, maybe not that one. Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely maybe not that one also. like, uh, I, But I say that, I say that and we still have really serious problems, especially like around racism. Like, so I'm not surprised that it happened, but there's also a part of me that's like, are they're, you fucking kidding? They're me? also bad at racism because I'm not going to assign colors to, to geographic locations, but that's not the kind of racist where Timbuktu would be. Well, I think that's kind of the point. Like, it's I think I think what they're saying is that there's an Asian person in Timbuktu. Oh, okay. They're not implying that everyone in T- Timbuktu is Asian. No. Okay. <laughs> Which I think makes it worse. Oh, uh, Spice Girls. It was bad. I was like, I was just like, when that happened, I'm just like, this is my whole fucking day now. A lot of people had to sign off on that line, too. Because they're not, it's not like the Spice Girls are like an organic band, either. No, it's they not were the Spice Girls crafted. group. It's the Spice Girls group. That is owned by whatever media, you know, LLC. Or yes. Fucking, like, someone had to sign off on that. Like, someone they had to write crafted. that. Someone had to write that. The Spice Girls had to read and approve and do their edits to it. And then they had to submit that. And then that had to get also approved. So a lot of people were like, that seems fine. <laughs> there are so many people who that passed through. And, <sighs> like, there are so many people. But that went through. It's just like, what the fuck, dudes? What the fuck, my dudettes? No, dude is gender so, yeah. neutral. So yeah, that was my that was my morning. Um, it's, it's a very interesting morning. <laughs> oh yeah, it. I I found that that's the. When I'm making jokes about something with Christina, I usually find something horrible about the thing we're joking about. Unexpectedly. Because yeah. oh. that's just the way of the world. Yeah, so so that song was written by Richard Stannard and Matt Rowe. So they worked but- together to write it, and then the Spice Girls approved it, and then whoever they're signed to also approved it. And I want to point out, they still sang it. Yeah. Like, they're not off the hook. They sang that shit. Oh, God. <laughs> I just can't. I can't. Oh. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Uh, that's, that's cool. Just... So, someone sent accidentally sent me nudes to the wrong number, and that wrong number was me. <laughs> 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 it's just like, wrong number, good luck. <laughs> So the question is, was it a dude or a lady? It was a lady. It was a lady. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, be- be- best of luck. <laughs> Man, so- imagine imagine doing that. That would be like the most embarrassing. Like, Yeah, always, so always double check the number, you know? You, qu- you got to quadruple check even. And also, like, don't open with that. Like... First, send like make, a hey, just double checking make, this is the right. Like, make sure. Yeah, make sure. Like, do some due diligence. Be like, hey, don't. Yeah, don't. You know what? Don't I'm, make that I'm your just, opener. 
I'm just going to make sure that this is the person before I send yeah. nudes. That whole thing, the whole, it was all pro completely preventable. So there's a lot of, someone learned a valuable life lesson. Someone learned Brandon, a very valuable life lesson. I think we need to start the episode because I just talked about Spice Girls for 20 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh. Which is way too long. It's extremely too long. Also, we should start doing like patron only content where you just do dramatic readings of Spice Girl lyrics. Oh, um, so welcome to this. Of, uh, there's a lot of things I can do, but whatever. Yeah, so welcome to the Spice Girls fan cast, Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I am so fucking sorry. I just, it, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> I was, this whole time I was like, why, 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 I just couldn't understand what no, I, I just needed to, I needed to exercise that entire line of thinking. So, you, Brandon... You sent that text, and the very first thing I did was look up what year it came out, because I was like, did they remake it? Brandon, please, tell me what this week's cryptid is. I need to be away from the Spice Girls. This week, we're talking about the Goatman of Prince George, Maryland. Oh, okay, a Goatman. A Goatman, yeah, yeah, this is a... I can uh, probably make a link to the spice girls in some way so oh absolutely absolutely this is something about of, scary uh, spice a, a blend between our um my last cryptid and uh the one with the bridge Which is the the, the beast, beast of Bladenboro yeah and the uh the pope lick monster yeah it's a, it's a, i'll call it a co yeah a combo of pope lick monster because of its body type and beast of Bladenboro because of dog murders um so let's why do the dogs have to get murdered i mean wrong place wrong time i guess i don't know i mean at least it's not cats we'll we'll see and um this we've officially reached the point of the podcast by the way because with uh the baby and everything i pre-wrote a lot of episodes and we're on a, every other week release date so i can confidently say the next probably five to six episodes will be new again for me too we'll be learning together <laughs> Because I haven't actually written something in, like, months, and I've officially, like, the amount of time has gone by where I don't remember anything I wrote anymore. That's amazing. You know what's actually really funny? That's close to the original concept that I had for this show. <laughs> it's very right? close. Because remember when I first pitched this show, I was like, okay, we write research for each other, and then we hand it off and have the other person read it. Yeah. <laughs> and like that was my idea. It was a bad idea. I I have so here's the thing. Yeah. The key to any good idea is fucking up like 30 times before you reach a good idea. True. So true. like as as somebody who's in academia and in who's been both in academia and like the corporate world, that's the secret to any form of success. You just have to fuck up enough that you don't fuck up once. Yeah. Yeah. It's a numbers game. You have to make mm -hmm. it. Every, I mean, it's it's it's. You, you've got it's to make the whole game argument. You, yeah, like 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 to get good at something, you really just have to make every combination of mistakes. Every like make every mistake that you can possibly do. That way, you're aware of them and how to either avoid or fix them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It, that's basically that's life in a nutshell. Is you just are constantly fucking up. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's that's literally like. That's the only way I learned how to, like, build guitars, is I did so many things wrong so many times. Now I'm like, all right, I can, I can fix them or do it or make it be good now. You know, you think... So, on on that line of thinking, I've been building model kits again. Oh, nice. And I've built a lot of model kits in my life. You think that I would learn not to fuck around with the the blade, the, the X-Acto knife? Oh, um, John. Because I dropped it. I dropped the X-Acto knife... I've dropped it twice recently. One time no. it landed just plumb into my floor. The other time <laughs> I, I went to say grab flip. it. Like no, no, I grabbed it. No, I no, grabbed it while no, it was flying. No, and no. I cut. I cut deep into my into my ring finger, which was I was lucky because I had just replaced the blade, so it was sharp. No, oh, oh. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the whole uh, a no. falling knife has no handle. Yeah, yeah, never, or chisel, never, never, never attempt to catch, like, the, the, 
I've hurt myself so many times. You even don't like, not even if it's something sharp. Now, if I drop something, I just take a step back no matter what it, except my baby. I take a step back. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> and just let it, let whatever's going to happen, happen. <laughs> <laughs> I did that with a I did that with the uh a soldering iron once. Like a hot no. a hot, like shitty oh. uh radio shack one, like the yeah. one that comes in the pack. Oh I did that with a soldering iron and um Yeah, I burnt my flesh pretty good. Anywho, we should probably get into the episode because like I'm I'm completely out of it this week. <laughs> Fair. So the goat man is a large half man, half goat, axe wielding monster with multiple orange mm origin stories located in the midwestern portion of maryland um while this is not the first uh article i was able to find about the goat man uh this was published by oddly enough the austin uh american on december 17th 1971 um and i say oddly so, enough because it's it's a texas magazine wrote about okay i was the about maryland. to ask that's why i said oddly enough okay okay that's texas um okay Shortly after the first publication by the Washington Post the month prior, um, I'm specifically using this article because it may as well have been written by me. Um, so it's yeah. titled Legend of the Goatman Survives Despite Lack of Evidence by Ivan G. Goldman. Uh, so it says, uh, duck along Fletcher Town Road, somewhere near the lair of the Goatman, the paved pothole path winds through a two-mile stretch of dense woods in northeastern Prince George County, Maryland, a secluded land where myths survive. Beer cans and occasional discarded mattresses or chunked cars dot the road's edges, but the forest, uh, but the forest away from the thoroughfare is not traversed by man. So, so I need to take a few seconds. There's a lot to unpack in his writing style in just the first two paragraphs. <laughs> the first sentence alone. Duck yeah. along Fletcherton Road. Who the hell says duck along a road? I don't know. Like, like that alone already <laughs> threw me. But yeah. then, like, the 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 shade that this man casts. He just shits in the first like, two sentences is so hard. <laughs> in Prince George County. It was amazing, and I had to use this as the article. Like, like he just dunks on them. Yeah. The paved pothole path, which, like, good on alliteration, first of all. Yeah. You know, I bet you that dude, I bet you that dude um wrote that, like, typed it up on a typewriter and was like, heh, heh. Oh, he knew he nailed it. He nailed it. Yeah, 100%. Oh. The trees shelter quiet strangeness. No traces of rabbit or squirrel, and birds do not sing. Something... I mean, hey, listen, listen. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a That's totally fine. quiet forest. I don't oh. want to hear fucking birds screaming horny oh, God. songs. They're, doing, they're just screaming horny songs. It's getting close to cicada season. It's just loud, just loud bugs when it's hot. It is not going to be great. Um... Something, a squatting, hul uh, squatting hulk bars the way. Approached warily, it is perceived finally as a thing rectangular, a thing of man, a spent refrigerator, gutted brutally, <laughs> on its back and on its side, scrawled a message, goat man was here. Ah, so it's the white thing uh, from like, is, a very early monster. Yeah. The, like, the, like, the white thing of Georgia. Person who, the white thing that somebody mistook a... Uh, a refrigerator is a monster for. Yeah. Oh god, that was um, was that wasn't that was Grafton? Was that Grafton episode. monster? It might have know. been the Grafton monster. That, that might have been Grafton. That would have been um, I was looking at it and then I lost it. It's and been a hot minute since that we covered was that one. roughly a hundred episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, it was the Grafton monster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a clue it's been a hot minute. It's it, we. It's been a while. <laughs> That's it's it. it's almost approaching the point where we could redo that one. We could probably just start rereading all of our copies. <laughs> honestly, honestly, a few of the early ones I might redo. There's some, but, especially like yeah, the early ones might be worth like a revisit and rewrite. Um, like I did the Dover Demon pretty dirty by doing it so early. There's there we we learned we learned we and developed a lot in the past hundred and ten episodes. <laughs> Except I haven't learned anything at the same time. So, you know. Uh, a clue revealed. Goatman, it is plain, owns a can of black spray paint. It's the Huntington section of Old Bowie. 
at the edge of the Coatmates Forest in a rural area about two miles northwest of the dead refrigerator. Okay, I love the fact that he's using the the refrigerator as as like, a land po- like mark as like it is a it is a wayfaring point. Yeah, it is a part of his imageability of this co- particular county in Maryland. There's, I like, also love that it implies that everyone in Maryland knows where the dead refrigerator is and can also use it as like a marker. Uh, here's the problem. There's probably more than one dead refrigerator in Maryland's woods. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Let's What's be the real. Goat man there's fridge? probably there's a fuck ton of them, probably. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a fuck ton of them in New York's woods. There's a lot of weird shit in the woods around here. Oh, so I've like seen Yeah. William Keen. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them worked. Maybe someone, people just like, put, there was a refrigerator for free. I don't know why I'm even saying this. There was a free refrigerator outside the other day. Great content, Brandon. You're welcome, John. <laughs> uh, but, okay. I do have one thing to say about that. They wrote works on it on a piece of cardboard. So when I bought my house, they had a refri- there was a refrigerator, right? Yeah. The thing a lot of people don't know, and they learn this when they buy a house, um, a refrigerator that's not on, if you leave it off and closed for, like, any period of time, it begins to smell like death. It begins to smell very bad. And also, if and, it's a house you bought that's old, it may be filled with poison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> not in my case, but yes. Uh but the thing is, somebody, like, I put it, my dad put it up on, like, Craigslist or something. Yeah. Somebody came and took it away. I didn't have yeah. to do anything with it. But you know what the fucked up thing is? That thing literally hurt to open. Like, it was so gross, it hurt to open because <laughs> of the smell. So, yeah. like, I can only assume that this refrigerator smells like death. It's it's probably not as bad as if it was indoors, I guess, because it could air out, maybe? it has to be open. Because yeah. if it's closed, that's the problem. There's a seal. Yeah, my chest freezer died a while back, and it had some fun smells. And I was sure. unable to fix it, because all the anything that would fit it stopped being manufactured when, like, uh... uh, uh what's that W? St- it was some... Everything was out of business. It's like trying to buy Radio Shack components. You can't. <laughs> Like, you had to find a guy that also had one that broke, but different, and trade parts. <laughs> Our things broke differently. Things broke, that's but basically, different. That's basically Transformers collecting. Yeah. <laughs> like, <sighs> not gonna lie. Like, collecting anything that's not currently out, that is the definition of Transformers collecting. Yeah. Do you know how many toys that are exist out there that are Frankenstein's monsters of multiple toys? Like... In the shelves behind me, there's at least, like, 20 that are Frankenstein oh, yeah. monsters. Oh, my basement is filled with things that broke, but I'm pretty sure if something breaks in the future, I could probably use something from it. <laughs> like, that's just my basement. I just have. I also just have a jar of screws. Just uh, random. Anytime we throw something out, I take the screws. <laughs> um, William Gein and Raymond Hayden, both 20, walk in the morning chill beside the house of Mr. and Mrs. Lacey Daniels. Gein Any relation li- to Ed Gein? I hope not. Gein... It's not the same spelling, but... No, no. Why is the... Oh, caps lock. Geens lives with the Daniels family. He and his brothers have been worried about Ginger, a 10-month-old dog missing from her pen since the previous night. Uh, <clears throat> so... Okay. So let's, we're let's, already... We're, we're, we're getting to the dog murder. Um, Ginger is the special pet of April Edward 16, the daughter of Mrs. Daniels by previous marriage. Gein and Hayden simultaneously spy a small, dark mass about the size of a football on the wet autumn grass. They investigate and find a gruesome specter, the head of Ginger. So, we're, we're up to one dog beheading. Here's the thing, Ginger Spice. G- it ties in. It ties in. This is, this, is how, this is how the Spice... This is the story of how the Spice Girls were all... Like simultaneously murdered. It was it was murdered. Ginger Spice as the animated mass of severed dog heads. Um, mm-hmm. Also <laughs> kissing aliens. Yes. 
uh, Ginger is a sprightly, oh, well, let me say, was a sprightly mongrel who closely, closely resembled a German shepherd, had been decapitated cleanly at the neck. The body is not found. The word circulated, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Occam's razor said some, like, weird proto-serial killer did this. Because, like, this is the right time period for, like, a person who's going to become a serial killer to, like, it is. be it's escalating. It is, yeah. Right? Like, this is the exact correct time for somebody who's, like, going to become a nightmare serial killer to be, like, experimenting and, like, yeah. just killing animals. Because, like, it, it's literally the perfect timing. It's the per- the, what, we should go back to the 70s. The word no, we cir- shouldn't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> we said it. The word circulated throughout the distant corner of the county. It's a long-settled but still sparsely populated region. Uh, a place apart from the Washington metropolitan area, uh, yet within the ge- geographical boundaries. Uh, Goatman! Exclamation point. Exclaims many a youngster, and if truth, truth be told, grown-ups as well, it is said that the Goatman always did entertain an appetite for dogs. The Daniels family calls the county police to express their regret over the telephone, but they offer no solutions, because... How could they? If they could solve your decapitated dog, they would just be a department of wizards. Pretty much. Like, I, I'm just, like, struggling to, like, figure the, out what... They're just going to send a sheriff like, over with a monkey paw and be like, good luck. Show me the show me the dog. Yeah. As it, like, slowly closes. Yeah. And then he dies. Yeah. Because show him the dog was... The dog's dead. Oh. Yeah. God, or, oh, they should remake Pet Cemetery. Actually, no, they shouldn't remake Pet Cemetery. I take they that made, back. They remade Se- Pet Cemetery. There, it was, they already it, did. It probably wasn't good. Um, they already did. And so another oral chapter is transcribed, reaffirming the enticingly horrible legend of the Goat Man. That's not a good sentence. No. You cannot tran- You don't transcribe an oral chapter. You don't. He gets a pass because like, of his first two sentences. I give him a lot like, of passes. But, like, by definition, if it's oral, like, history, it's not transcribed unless you're making it not oral well, history. Unless, unless he was des- describing himself writing the article as transcribing the oral history, which could be uh, a possibility. But, like, the, the, the implication here is that the people are in, in, are transcribing the oral thing. Not True. I'm being a stickler, but that's only because his first two, sen- his first two paragraphs were so good. I know he can do better. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not being mean. We're holding him to a higher standard that we know he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's capable of achieving. You can do better. Oh, yeah. No one speaks of the fact that Ginger's head was found about 40 yards from the Penn Central Railroad tracks. Tracks traversed by swift metro liners that could easily strike an unwary dog and launch its head down the embankment and carry the body on the undercarriage to some distant location. And just Goat Man's a train! Goat Man's a train! He's a fucking transformer! <laughs> Holy shit! Ghost Man's Astro Train! Astro Train with a thirst for dog blood. Well, I mean, trains in general have a thirst for dog blood. It's what powers them. It's how they run. They stopped using they stopped using coal. That's... What do they use now? Dog blood. Have you noticed that with the uh, the, the the decline of coal uh, p- p- being used as a power source, there's been a lot more dog disappearances. It's because electricity is fake. It doesn't exist. It's all it's just, just dog, dog blood. blood. <laughs> it's just pipes to pipe dog blood. <laughs> yeah. I should know. I, I I have a computer science degree. We talked yeah. about that. Yeah. The oh. sil- it turns out silicon really good at trans trans more transmitting dog blood. Really it's good. So like, good phenomenal. at transmitting dog blood. That's why dogs mm-hmm. run so fast on the beach. Mm-hmm. It's it's and the actually sand is transporting the dog blood sack. Mm-hmm. Also also the uh, Wi Fi Wi Fi. Yeah, it's just aerosolized dog blood. Oh, that makes so much sense now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You never thought about that, did you? No. No. <laughs> and that's I, why that's can... why you can have spotty Wi-Fi. It, Wi-Fi is because you just got a bad fan. Just like that's slow internet. Go murder away. your neighbor's dog. 
Mm-hmm. That, oh, I mean, that's the best way. That's how you get the lowest ping when playing Apex Legends, for sure. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Oh, and just who is Goatman? He's about the size of a man, has a man's face, but he's all covered in fur and walks on his hind legs, says a young man. I think that, people around uh, here are really believing this Goatman. They see something move, and right away, they're on the telephone calling for help. So, so the description of Goatman just sounds like... It kind of just sounds like a hairy dude. Just a hairy guy. Just a like, hairy guy. It just guy. sounds like a like a very hairy, like... Eastern European man who's walking through the woods like bare chested. Yeah, Jim Brewer could really go into Maryland and scare some people. <laughs> Call back to a very old SNL skit. <laughs> uh, it's difficult to get two people to agree on the description or history of this creature. He is an illusory being. Uh, some say his upper body is man and his lower body is goat. I would call that a satyr. Um, yeah, me too. Still, others say he is just a, a man, not supernatural, but quite mad, living alone in his forest, committing periodic atrocities. That's, like, you imply not impossible. Like Non-zero chance. Not impossible. That's actually probably the most probable, like, existence. Like, yeah. there's a non... Because, like, there are enough serial killers out there, like, and that have been active in just, like doing random shit that that is not impossible yeah there's a lot of serial killers who just never took it to human but like just just disappear in the pets the universe and there's a lot of serial killers that were never found it is actually a distressing number of serial killers that are never found because the thing is really really fucking hard to find somebody who killed someone they don't know yeah like Almost 100% of murders that are solved are because the person knew the person. Yeah. Or, like, were around people that knew who would, like, just go somewhere. Yep. Just go somewhere different. Mm-hmm. Well, you, one, turn off your literally. phone GPS, then go somewhere different. Mm-hmm. Actually, don't even bring your phone. Yeah, good point. Because you can ping. Yeah. Yeah, just don't, just, just don't, just don't, like. Also, don't. Just oh, don't yeah, also murder don't. anyone. Yeah, don't. Like, just, like let's, let's be real. Don't, don't murder people. Just don't do a murder. Don't murder people. Don't do a like, murder. Yeah. Uh, the University of Maryland Folklore Archives contains several tales of Goatman. Uh, the stories were gathered by a student in a folklore class who interviewed high school students in northern Prince George. Some say the Goatman originally was a scientist who experimented on goats at the nearby National Agricultural Research Center that he ran away to live in a shack in the forest. This version says he grew hair all over his body and he would emerge from a secluded shack to spring upon passing cars and beating them with an axe. Uh, this is just this is just black sheep. It is just black sheep. Now that you that's th- just black sheep. Yeah. that's just the movie Black Sheep. That that it's whole thing sheep. is just the mo- like it is literally the plot of Black Sheep. Not the Chris Farley one. The one that was done by the same people that made Mo- Lord of the Rings. <laughs> really? Yeah, Weta Workshop. I mean, it's New Zealand. So- it's, oh, it was Weta Workshop. It was Weta Workshop. Weta Workshop did it. Yeah. Uh, he's supposed to have killed about four dogs around here lately, says April Edwards, owner of Ginger. I know up the track somewhere a blue tick hound was killed about two months ago. Now, again, she keeps describing dogs murdered along train tracks. So That, that th- seems important. It's, it seems like there's some dots that aren't being connected. <laughs> there's there's a very clear line that I can draw between these two things, and it's a railroad track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight as a rail. Yeah. Oh, Captain Lawrence Wheeler, Bowie District Commander of the Kenty Police Force, says that his department receives calls every once in a while about the goat man. Sometimes the callers really mean it, he says, and sometimes you know they're just playing a prank. All these calls from strictly uh, rural areas around Bowie, where people have lived for many generations as laborers and tenant farmers, uh, where people haven't got the opportunity to get much education, the legend just gets passed around from generation to generation. Um... Sounds Don't, like he's. It sounds like he's shaming these people. Sounds like he's he like shaming people for not making as much money. <laughs> Pretty much, it, a little bit. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a privileged outlook on the whole situation. It, it's. <laughs> He's showing his privilege yeah. for sure. It's which I don't even. I'm not even saying as a he joke. won't show up to a call because he considers someone to be poor and therefore it lying. actually. 
it is actually explicitly implying that he doesn't show up to calls that poor people make because he thinks they're lying. Yeah. Uh, it so, almost outright says it. Yeah, so he goes up on our cool guy corkboard. Um, it's two weeks since the discovery of Ginger. Several neighborhood teenagers are watching television in the living room of Raymond Hayden's house around the corner from the Daniels place. Sounds like the worst. Just having teenagers in your living room. Eek I mean, it, <laughs> teenagers in a living room watching 70s television. Watching 70s news, I think. Like, really? They're, they're, like, t- t- I, I would imagine they're like trying to like find like more reports of dog murders along train tracks and not connecting uh, those dots. Um, eek, although I shouts. guess... Yeah. Well, was Land of the Lost... Was Land of the Lost a 60s show or a 70s show? I want to say I 60s on that one. I want to say 60s, because that was good. That was... Oh, oh, 70s, 70s. This oh, is in okay. the time frame. If they were watching Land of the Lost, that would have been fine. I oh, there's a remake. Land of the Lost. 2009. We should just rename we the show that? to like Brandon, Brandon, John and Brandon Google things live. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, you and I saw that movie together, the remake. Oh, yeah, we did, didn't we? We were in the same theater. I sat yeah. next to you and watched it. <laughs> yeah, but that was like, uh, you know, over a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying we, we were both there. So, yeah. I don't uh, know why you're so surprised. It was yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, actually, yeah. It now had that Will I Ferrell. There's you know what was yeah. pretty funny? I saw the new Jackass movie. It gets a thumbs up. A lot of cog torture, but thumbs up. Um Eek, That's someone weird. shouts, there's something out there. The teenagers rush to the window to see a form outlined against the night sky sitting on top of a pickup truck. The police are called and they come and they search and find nothing. Uh, we oh, saw just what... Billy Bob. Probably just Billy Bob. <laughs> he, he likes to stand on top of pickup trucks. He, he does night sitting. Oh, he likes sitting. to sit on top of them. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I'm so excited. Gonna... He doesn't own the pickup trucks, though, so he's an asshole. I've got some night digging in my future because I want to put up a shed that I... When I get home from work, I take the baby so in, until like 9.30. So then at 9.30, I'm going to go out and do some night digging to bury those posts. I've been signed Brandon, out for my... Abso- you're absolutely 100% going to get the cops called on you if you do night digging. <laughs> I know, but the nice thing about night digging is like, you, I won't get sweaty because it's cooler outside. Yeah, but like somebody's going to be like, oh, Brandon's digging holes again. Is he burying something? Just me doing just a I big mean, old guy doing night digging. There is a chance. There is a chance that they're like, I've seen the weird shit that man gets up to. I'm not gonna bother. Yeah, <laughs> that's. You, I mean, I wonder walking. how many dead ass. I wonder how many serial killers made it through like their whole killing thing because people were like, I don't want to fuck with that dude. Oh, like, that's a possibility. He's doing something sketch. But, like, I don't feel like fucking around and finding out. Yeah. I feel like my silhouette would be scary to see at night with a shovel. Probably. Probably. It definitely would have a... There would de- you could definitely you could definitely make a, a horror, like... Like, you know one of those, like, false stings where, like, they're, they build up the tension and then it's nothing? Yeah. You could probably do oh, that. Oh, for sure. Oh, I'd be like... Yeah, 100%. Uh, like 100%. Dale from Tucker and Dale. Well, I, th- I think it's, it's low risk night digging because, like, the neighbor on one side's um, not around any dead, um, and the <laughs> and the other ones that could see me know me. Brandon, so, uh, Brandon, yeah. if 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 the neighbor's dead, that's oh, higher then, risk. And then I'm doing night digging. Oh, yeah, yeah. you yeah. might just get haunted. Yeah. Oh. I'm excited for nice digging. Anyway, eek show someone there's a uh, on top of the pickup truck. The police are called, they find nothing. We saw whatever it was get off the truck and go back towards the woods, recalls Kathy Edwards, April's sister. I don't know, it could be Goatman for all I know. Um Why so- is like what is that is the So, okay. There is a chance that she's like or she's just like, I, I don't fucking know. It could be fucking goat man. Like the tone I think of how that's she what said it was. that. Right? Cause like it sounds more like, what are you fucking saying? Like, I don't fucking know who this person was. Yeah. It's probably fucking goat man. I don't know. I, I, I really do think that's what it was. Um, so let's start with uh the USDA Ag Center at Beltsville. 
and what they have to say. Um, we think it's just stupid, says Kim Kaplan, spokesperson for the center. Maybe it's sort of fun just a little bit uh, to be part of local legends. <laughs> uh, people really don't even talk about him, says Kaplan. I mean, it's so silly. It's not even something that's joked about. Kaplan sounds like she's so fucking over this. I, this honestly, honestly, this is kind of like hitting the point that I, I feel like I've made on pot episodes before where yeah. people in an area don't actually give a shit about this story. Like it was a flap. It was a thing for a moment and then yeah. it's left for them. But for everyone else, they just keep bringing that shit up. Like it's it, everyone else is over it, but yeah. like, e like the people there are over it, but like everyone else is like, shit, I just discovered this. I need to find out. Yeah. Uh, or, ha ha ha, dumb rednecks. <laughs> True. Uh, Kaplan was also quick to poke holes in the Goatman story, saying that, quote, don't you think he would have retired by now? She asked, is his great grandson a Goatman? Is he collecting social security? Yes. And yes. Goatman's just Next a question. social security. It's a train pulling a social security scam on dogs. Uh, Kaplan could not even recall when the, uh, there were last goats at the center, although she surmised it had been generations ago. Uh, Brandon, have you ever seen a dog with a social security card? I've not. No? No? No, you haven't. Because Goatman stole them all. Goatman stole them. Just fraud. Fraud at a mass scale. Goatman is just, is just a fraud machine. <laughs> Goatman is really an inside trader. He's part of Big Kibble. And, uh, he's just... <laughs> Stealing people's identities and investing heavily. Not uh, people. Dogs. 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 Only dogs. In fact, the center is mostly devoted to records and genetics. They have, for instance, kept elaborate mathematical records pertaining to what bull sperm helps produce the best cow's milk. Um, also, this picture was on the news. Um, how is this? How did that happen? How did somebody? That is the dog. Okay. So it's like very clearly a dude in a suit. Like very clearly. They have, like, a ram's head on top of a, like, shaggy gorilla body, basically. Yeah. Like, it kind of just looks like a gorilla suit with a different head. It <laughs> does, kind of, now that you bring it up. Yeah. The, um... Oh, one last thing is, uh... I imagine they are very over it, because I, I did contact the USDA Ag Center at Beltsville. And did you actually? I did, and they never got back to me. <clears throat> and that was a while ago. You actually, you actually did. Yeah. Amazing. And fun fact: the government, if you ask them about goat monsters, don't don't get back to you. Really, but I was I was trying to be cool. But I, I I didn't ask specifically about Goatman. I asked for if they had because a lot of companies like my company has a guy who's just obsessed with the company history. So I wanted to know if they had any historical context that would lead people. Like, what would have been the spark? for the goat man not is goat man real but like mm -hmm. what what was around at the time that like locals could have latched onto to start it, they, they never got back to me i still haven't heard back from a library in the area <laughs> so i i back in the first year of this podcast i reached reached out to the kinderhook library because there's a there's a an event called the Kinderhook Blob, where there's like a cryptid that was sighted, and it's like literally 45 minutes from where we are, for where, yeah. I, where I'm sitting right now. Um, <laughs> I emailed them, "Hey, I'm doing a show about this, and I like to like dig into stuff. Do you have any microfilm or like newspaper records from this time period? I wanted to do a little digging, and yada yada yada. Never yeah. responded to me. That was like <laughs> that was that was like three years ago." And you're still and checking need, your inbox daily. I'm still waiting. I still, should have probably followed up. Yeah, if if we never, if you, if y'all never hear the Kinderhook Blob episode, that's because of the library. I mean, it is explicitly because of the library that I haven't done it. <laughs> uh, while the do 70s it. was peak Goatman, there were prior sightings and more recent sightings as well. In June of 1963, a young couple were, um, I don't know, wailing on Zug Road. Walking. Oh, walking. walking I'd walk. Yeah. Yeah, typo. There we go. Walking on the road when they observed a peculiar creature staring from them <laughs> at them from the edge of the woods. The woman described it as a tall, ragged animal with human-like features. I Why? suspect it was SCP-1471 just jacking it. Um, 
Nah, nah, nah. SCP-1471 doesn't jack. She chills. Chills so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just... The smell of burning rubber in the air. And that's just from friction. Mm-hmm. There's, she goes for it. She goes, she for, goes it. for it. She makes sure to like pat everything dry first, which is odd, but her thing. It's very strange. Very strange. In April of 1971, a farmer near Fletchertown Road reported seeing a large man-like creature eating the remains of a pig. Uh, when the farmer approached the scene, the creature ran off. And now that I think that, about like... that, it could just be barbecue. <laughs> Like, it could just be a guy pissed he wasn't invited to a hog roast. It literally could. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, if you're if you're taking the specific language used there, it literally could just be a guy talking about barbecue. It could. Uh, in September of 1976, in uh, Woodmore, a landscaper at the Woodmore Country Club finds un- unidentified remains on the golf course near Lasford Road. While attempting to, to, to dispose of them, he hears a growl. As he looks up, he observes a large unknown animal. And the thing I and would then, like to point out is they never said what kind of remains. It but could like, be anything. But Brandon, they also they also don't say what happens next. No, like, like it just kind of is like, yeah, he sees a dude doing a growl, a thing doing it a growl, and then that's it. I yeah. assume he's dead, but then the question is, how did how did we get the the story? I mean, let's be real, this was Jesus, like fifty years ago now, yeah. So there is a chance that he could be dead. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, because he would have been, he would have likely been in his twenties or thirties, so he yeah, would be seventies or eighties, and depending on thirty, he's. Solid chance he's dead. There's a very solid chance. (laughs) Yeah. In October of 1985 in Glendale, police respond to a report of teenagers making noise at the old Glendale hospital site. While investigating, the officer hears unknown sounds, is unable to locate the source. Could just just be a haunted hospital. It's just the teenagers. It's just the teenagers. I guarantee you. That would be such a good scene in a movie. Like... The cops go to investigate like a shut down, like old insane asylum, and like, but there's like kids that are just fucking on like the third floor. But so they hear moaning, but they just think it's ghosts, and like anytime something like, rattles, shit. Moves. <laughs> <laughs> the you, what, I heard a ghost. What did it say? He said, "Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Just stop moving." <laughs> I'm okay, having one. <laughs> it's, I'm having one. It's happening. <laughs> why oh god it kind of reminds me of the time that i fucked with you in phasmophobia there's yeah and i just was th- that was a the, lot of the times it was the time that i was standing underneath you in the dark in a dark room and just making the uh, <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> and oh. you could hear it and i thought that was fucking hilarious here's a fucking fun thing my daughter started just making that noise like she Amazing. just finds it fun She'll do it, and then she finds it funny and does, like, a baby laugh. But now it, 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 I could be, like, playing a game or, like, trying to write an episode or something. And she'll just, and it, like, I'll be, I keep all my rooms dark. And I'll just hear, uh, and I'll have to look over and make sure it's her doing it. <laughs> she's just doing Ringu sounds. Your your daughter sounds like she's going to be, a like, a nightmare when she gets older. Like, yeah. And by, when I say nightmare, I mean... One of the scariest fuckers I've ever seen. Yeah, it's uh, she. Yeah, it won't she's be long. Got she's got a gift. She just learned she's she got has a feet, gift. so we've got that going for us. <laughs> she figured out those are attached. <laughs> shit! What are these? Yeah, she's like, oh shit! What are these? Can I put them on my mouth? Can I throw them? I'm gonna try. August of 1990. Uh, in Hyattsville, during a birthday party at Magruder Park, a boy runs into the woods after a ball. Moments later, he screams. When adults arrive, they find him visibly shaken. The boy tells his mother, it was a dark thing with red eyes who stands in the corner of my room at night. So, what? <laughs> that's okay. scary. The boy... Why is this... Why is this related to Goatman? Does Goatman, like, break into his house every night? I think they're assigning everything to Goatman at this point. Just anything kind weird. Kind of. In May of 1998, in Bowie, a group of teenagers are hanging around near a local bridge. Teenagers by a bridge, something bad's always going to happen. Uh, when it's they guaranteed. Notice, it's a guarantee. It's. They're going to jump off it. 
Yeah, like art. They're going to jump off it. Architectural steel does this weird thing to like teen blood where it just makes things happen. Um, when they notice yeah. something moving towards the weeds nearby, the two teens go to investigate and describe seeing a tall human like animal run into the forest. Um, this could all also just be creeps. Yeah, like a lot of these could just be just a weird creeper. Um, also, I, that reminds me, do you remember the trend in our area where, like, teenagers would jump into rivers off of bridges, like, that go over, like, local creeks all the yeah. time? That was, like, a super common thing. Yeah, that, like, there were just spots. Was, I think that's still a thing, probably. It's, yeah, probably. Kids I mean, jumping off. there was, <laughs> there were some people who were really fucking stupid and jumped off, like, the top of the bridge. Yeah, they're jumping like, off bridges, had, like, a, bridges and cliffs. An arc. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, die. that's how, that's, no, if Kinda you're going to go you cliff die. jumping before, just send someone down to like do a little swim around in the area just to make sure it's not like low tide. <laughs> well, the other thing too is if, like, if you land wrong and like you get knocked out, like you can very easily die. Yeah. People, people don't realize like how easy it is for humans to die when we do things that are not the things we do normally. Yeah. We're, we're very resilient as long as we stay within the bounds of what we're built to do. Pretty a- much. Outside of that, eh, it gets sketchy. Yeah, pretty much. The second, the second you start to get wild with it, there's a really serious chance you die. Yeah. In, uh, For me, that's not a lot at all, to be honest. We don't have a lot of a big safety zone. I, running at this point, I think, might have like an increased chance of me dying. So, you know. Yeah, just moving weird. Just moving mm-hmm. weird. Uh, in July of 2007, a Glenarden man, uh, Maryland, a camera crew for a WRC-TV uh, is on location to cover a local golf tournament when they notice a strange animal moving in the trees nearby. The cameraman manages to capture a few seconds of video before the animal disappears. Um, is this the is this the one that was on the news? This is not what was on the news. <laughs> I wish it was. That'd be so much funnier. Um, Barry Lee Pearson, a folklorist at the University of Maryland, said folk legends often originated as cautionary tales from adults. However, modern examples like the Goatman are most commonly generated by teenagers themselves. Instead of serving as a warning to stay away from areas mentioned, the stories end up stirring interest to those sites. Consequently, more young people flock to places like Fletchertown Road. Um, Students will get together, go to someone's house, drink some beer, and go to the site, Pearson said. They'll continue to hang around and eventually scare themselves, and someone will say they saw something. Uh, that is a th- f- h- fact. R- fact. Do you remember the time we were at Mike's house? Were you at yeah. Mike's house? And uh, like, I was there a number of times. Was that the time? Were you there the time that he was like saying that he saw something and you were running around with, I think, Xander? To try and find it, and I was just chilling with Mike. Like, was he was that claiming me? that... The, I think it might have been. I did a lot of I, running around in Mike's woods. Yeah, there was a lot of... There was a lot of weird and shit. And running yeah. in the woods half the time from that damn chicken. You know, that angry, <laughs> angry rooster. Angry I, I like, rooster. Like, I'm thinking about... I'm thinking about, like... Because, like, there was a lot of time spent between my basement... Your basement in Mike's basement in high school. Hell yeah. Those are like the three basements. And they all had a very different like objective. Oh, yeah. Because like when you're in my basement, you're just playing fucking video games. That's yeah. pretty much it. Uh, when you were in your basement, we watched movies a lot. A lot of horror movies. Yep. Um, And then we were in Mike's basement. Anything went. Anything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it wasn't, it wasn't like there was no like norm. It was just fucking weird. Yeah, it it was it was like our two basements were were you were kind of on a set playlist. Mike's basement was shuffle, pretty much. But yeah, Mike's basement was basically like the the mystery box, like <laughs> of the basements. Yes. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, love me a good basement. I do. I I I want to finish my basement so bad. I wanted. So have I told you what I want to do with that basement? I've got such a fucking idea. I think. What's your basement plans, man? What's your basement plans? 
So, um, I have to plan for the fact that the, the, like, drain to the outside is there. So, like, I have to have, like, a containment area for the shit pipe. Um, yeah. But that's a whole other thing that's, like, like I'd put it in a closet or some bullshit. Um, but my idea was to basically finish off, like, three quarters of the basement so I could still say that the basement was unfinished. Because yep. New York State. Um, <laughs> uh in that room, I wanted to put a like a gaming table like you have. Yes. And I wanted to put a pro- like a high quality projector. Up, oh, nice. And then have like a drop down for it because yeah. the thing is, I could make that basement totally dark if I put a wall in. Oh, that's where very the, true. Like to block off the the downstairs like window. Yeah. So it would be perfect like conditions for movies. Yeah. And that's 100% what I want to do. And then not only that, but I have like, so I have my boiler room, like my, my, um, my boiler and my, uh, uh, my networking stuff is down in the basement. Yeah. So what I would do then is because I'm a fucking nerd, I'd get a, a bookshelf on wheels. So like I could like wheel it away Yeah. to get in there and get access. Oh, Cause like, I want to, I want to block room. that off. Yeah. But like also I don't want there to just be a door there. Yeah, I always want a secret. I still might make a secret room because I, I totally can make I've I've it would be small, but I totally have the ability to make a secret room. You could you could pretty the your workshop room you could like cut off of like a couple feet and make a secret room. Yeah. Well in my laundry room if like on the stairs that go up, there's actually a like a, a cabinet, but it's not on the floor, it's on the ceiling part yeah and it's actually from the floor level of the second floor just extends out and then there's a closet so if i just remove the door that's above the stairs and just put it replace it with drywall and then in the closet that's in the upstairs room just install a small door on the bottom then i would just have a secret room that's like very low effort (laughs) that's that that's i will say this the more light the if you have a secret room, there is a creepiness factor to owning a secret room. There is, but I'm not against creepiness factor. But oh, like, actually, on the on the creepiness factor thing. So I I was the other day. I don't know why. You talking about your projector reminded me of this. For some reason, I was trying to like think about like what a funeral would be like, and then I remembered um, hologram Tupac. So I started trying to find like cost out what it what it would to like just have a hologram of myself and not tell you anyone at my funeral. <laughs> no, I will tell you this. They are very expensive right now, but assuming that you know, I make it till I I, I I'm mean seventy it's just pepper's seventy-two goes. to eighty-five. That uh I, I could the, the technology should be there and cheaper maybe. <laughs> It's just Pepper's Ghost, though. That's, like, how all hologram things work. Like, yeah, but there's also, there's like, effects and shit that, like, I want to I do, like, a proper, like, a do you want your fucking hologram. Do you want your, your funeral to be a Hatsune Miku concert? Because that's what you're, you're describing to me right now. Yeah, like, uh yeah, I, I, had, I, I had so many plans, and it's. it's I kind of want my funeral to be a Hatsune Miku concert now. You can, and and even though the websites are like call us for pricing, um, Kim Kardashian had um a hologram for one of her parties, so, and that cost is known. So that was thirty grand for whatever she did. That's so much. That's a lot, but think about it, thirty years, fifty years, fifty. How old am I now? Think about fifty-one years in the future. It's a very it's, specific. It's going to be that. That is, I'm. I'm estimating. I'm going to die somewhere between seventy-two and eighty-five. Um, that it should be cheaper, and also that's a lot of time to save up for a fucking hologram. Just a grand a month, a grand a year. Yeah, like if I can tuck that away into a secret account, <laughs> and then your wife is like, "Hey, why are we like?" Why are we like losing a, about a hundred dollars every month? Like, where is that going? What are you spending that on? Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll just say it's for surprise. Like, if I just go, it's for surprise. She'll be like, "All right, fair." 
Because I spent a lot of money on weird shit. Yeah, that's true. I'll never forget the fanny pack. The fanny pack? That's one of them. Oh, for, I got her Yeezys for her anniversary. Yeezys and uh, a, a really large box of Harvest Cheddar uh, Sun Chips. <laughs> I know which one was the, the better, which one was the more enjoy, appreciated gift, too. There's well, I know which one <laughs> I can also appreciate. The Yeezys. No. <laughs> I, love, I love me. They're, they're so fucking weird. I just don't understand. I just don't understand them. <laughs> I don't understand them either. There's the boots. The, they won't knock anyone. Like like my my um brother in law has a pair that and they were the same shoe size. So I, I tried them on. It's like, oh, these are very comfortable. Those are fine. But like some of them, you just look at them. And you go, why? Just why? Some of the designs remind me of Marshall shoes. Yeah, well, you can also sense. get them for, like, because when people say Yeezys, they just think of the um, Adidas brand. They also license the designs, so you can buy them for, like, way cheaper. They're just not Adidas, but they'll oh. be officially licensed still. Interesting. Yeah. Anywho. So what's this about uh, the actual GOAT? Oh, that <laughs> that's just Hakuo, like, the greatest of all time uh, sumo guy, uh, career of 1,187 wins. That's so many. Also, so I want to say... It's the most in, in recorded history. That dude is fucking ripped. Here's the thing. They're all just fucking jacked. So what they do is they get fucking jacked, and then because everybody's jacked, that's why they eat so much, is because they're just trying to get heavier so it's harder to move them. So every single one of them, they only eat and power lift, and that's it. <laughs> like That's all their day, life. Every day, that's their life, is to just try to get a, to be able to move anything and at the same time to become unmovable. That's their whole fucking deal. And the other thing that makes Sumo so great is, like, it's not like boxing where, like, there's no, I'm going to, like, outlast my opponent or wear them down. You fight them once ever until the next tournament, and all the matches are only, like, at most, like, a minute long, usually. So the, everyone gets as big as they can and as strong as they can and then when it's time to fight they just do everything they possibly can because they know it's going to end in like a minute and then then it's just done you just go all out so yeah every match is just every uh, the biggest dudes you can imagine going as hard as they possibly can <laughs> that's pretty fucking great and then the winner I... just gets handed a stack of money on stage in front of everybody it's just fucking great I still love it Run day fourteen of the house uh, of the current uh, tournament today. <laughs> I I like I knew sumo wrestlers were jacked. It's just this particular picture makes me realize just how jacked they're like fucking ripped. Like, well, they like it's a thing where they like pick up their opponent and then turn and drop him outside of the ring. They all weigh between like 350 and 450 pounds. So they're all ripped enough to just carry 400 pounds. That's <laughs> horrifying. It's fucking terrifying. It really is. It's really a terrifying prospect. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly. You could just kill anybody. <laughs> I'd be more afraid to come across a sumo wrestler in the woods than I would be to come across Goatman. I would too. Oh, and then they just do cute shit at the like they're just the biggest, most horrifying individuals, and then they'll just go do like karaoke for children. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah, the idea of a huge dude just singing like children's anime songs is oh. hilarious to me. Oh, I so, so the, I love watching it live when I can, and yeah. there's there's like people post facts to so the guy in this picture, Hakuo. So here's the most gangster shit I think I've ever heard of anybody do. There was a guy uh, who hit the upper ranks for his first time, and I don't know why Hakuho did this to him. I'm assuming the the guy was cocky and he decided to check him. And this guy, by the way, is the actual like greatest in recorded history. It's like if my, like you are cocky around Michael Jordan. He shows up to his to the, essentially this guy's house where he lives because they all live and train in one of the silly. This guy shows up and then beats him 
50 times in a row and the last time knocks him unconscious and then leaves the disrespect like i don't know what iowa did to deserve that and, and it's i don't think he, he didn't get like punched he just like from repeated head injuries from their bouts he got this, a cte this kid's knocked unconscious and then he lives well they they're big dude like so one guy pulled out of this tournament because he fractured his neck but no one touched his neck it's just from like t- like just two dudes bumping their chest together so hard. <laughs> Jesus, that's horrifying. It's so, uh, uh, I Legitimately love it. Legitimately horrifying. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't been able to guess, we're done with the episode. We're done. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we we start with talking about the Spice Girls for twenty minutes, and then we'll end with sumo for. <laughs> Pretty much, that's like the definition of this show. Yeah, that one dude's gonna be so mad. If he's listening still. That, oh, that one guy. Oh, That one guy that is going to be pissed. He's just pissed. He's um, like, they talk about nothing of substance. I mean, that's basically the definition of the show. Hurry. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> talk about monsters. The real Quick, important stuff. Talk about the fake thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hurry. Talk about how many dogs run across this train track. I need it. <laughs> I need to know how many dogs died brutally because they're dogs. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, if you want to like follow us, our website's cryptopediacast.com. Instagram is at cryptopediacast. And yeah, there's the yawn. <laughs> That's how you know it's uh, over. That is how you know the episode's over. Um, Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have an, a YouTube uh, be sure to subscribe so I can actually have a a a channel name that is not like U C R Z L Z W C Q C J V G one W G T A S W Z seven P A. Um, I have the episodes <laughs> lagged, uh, so the um, so we release whenever we release a new like audio episode, we release a video episode, the last week's video episode, so. Um, and that's mainly because I forget to generate the audio, f- the video files consistently. So I like to give myself the wiggle room. Nothing wrong with some wiggle rooms. Um, we also have a Patreon and the Patreon supports the podcast and allows us to continue doing stuff. Um, I think we're missing people on this. Uh, oh, but this, we it's have possible. I don't. We also have Bushcraft Kelso twice. Yeah, this is probably from me, like, mad copying and pasting, trying to update. Um, That's possible. I'm, um, but we have a we have please. a level called Jackalopes. Jackalopes uh, get mentioned on the podcast. Uh, what is it? What is our... I can't even remember our levels. It's been a while since I said all this. Jackalopes, we have snakes, snakes. hodags. Yeah. I think hodags get access to the episode scripts... Jackalopes get mentioned on the podcast, and hoop snakes just get our gratitude. Yeah, I usually mention so them like right. once when they first set up, but like mm-hmm. after that, I don't. Um, no, like, but they they are appreciated. They pay they pay for website hosting. It literally pays for the hosting of the website and the podcast. So like, yeah, you know, I I usually take the money out in September, and because that's when the payments go. So you know, it's it's how it works and all this stuff is centered through my credit cards so (laughs) (laughs) um anywho our jackalope level listeners this week include uh bird schneider uh, bushcraft kelso clay sinclair marty von party matthew smith um and of course Young Flat Earth Creationist Consortium, exactly like science, but only better. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't actually be upset if if Young Earthers were listening to this, because, like, maybe they, they'd understand, like, the notion of, like, questioning a thought at all. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Oh, my favorite thing. Oh, we're starting daycare soon. My favorite thing that uh, the daycare, uh, uh, the head of the daycare said to me was like, they'll believe anything. 
like <laughs> kids. It's true. Yeah. That's the real risk with children. Um, we have a Facebook group. I don't post in it anymore. I don't think Brandon posts it anymore. Whatever. Uh, we also have a Discord that is a link in the show notes. Uh, it's surprisingly popping. Like, and it's, it's simultaneously fun. horrifying. This morning, there was a lot of Shrek burlesque. So if you're interested in that, go to our Discord. Mm-hmm. It's in the uh, mm-hmm. in the Cursed mm-hmm. Images uh, channel. We also have, uh, we recently got emoticons, and one of them is uh, SCP-1471, and it gets used, or is it 1417? I just get it mixed up. It gets used, it gets, one the one that's horny, the horny one. Yeah, we've, we've got the horny, it is 1471, yeah. We got the horny. We got the horny SCP. We got the Bigfoot. We got the Squonk. We got a Jeff. I think. Yeah, we got a Jeff. We got Jeff. a Danny DeVito. I, I got. I've got a Baja Blast in the wings. I'm gonna release eventually. You know, the the, the important ones. The, so like, very important. I almost hit leave server. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, okay. Join our um, Discord. <laughs> if you, yeah, um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. We actually have twelve ratings on on Spotify, which is like, <laughs> which horrifyingly puts us in like the top seventy or eighty percent of all podcasts in terms of number of people who've actually responded to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrifying. It's, it's oh, also if you it's you're kind, that, go do that. So bump us higher if that if that's all it takes to get in the top like eighty. Put us in the ten top ten because like I think twenty is like is is like the the ninetieth percentile. So like oh wow, we're close to an A. Sky's guys. the limit, baby. Come on. I mean, uh, if you have any monster quest or stories, be sure to send them in. I. I'm still looking for them because I wait until the last minute to do my episodes and spend basically a whole day doing research. So I'm always looking for them. I know Brandon, you've got like a backlog now. Yeah, which I, I'm jealous I, of. I, I like boom and bust. It's I, I do nothing but like write for two weeks and then just don't do anything for a while until I That's go, oh crap, I'm down to two, and then I just write a bunch, which is great because. Uh, after a, f- a little while, it's like reading everything for the first time. Uh, let's see. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. I'm on Instagram at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird.